Hi everyone, it's Louise again and I just wanted to make a quick video um, just to basically tell you about some of the things I've found while trying out a couple of different types of um, clear casting or epoxy resins. Um, I've recently tried to um, make some journal covers using um, a mould, a silicone mould, which um, I showed this um, particular piece to you the other day. Um, it's just um, an A6 I think. Um, it's an A6 silicon mould um, which creates six holes down one side for you to use some um, binding clips. So one thing I did notice with this is the um, Sophie and Toffee's two part crystal epoxy resin. Um, this resin was such a pleasure to work with. Um, it was it had a fairly low viscosity, so it filled the mould really well without leaving lots of air bubbles. Um, and if you look at the final piece as well, you can see that there's a there's a good um, what's the word? Basically, the black pigment is really well taken up, and it's consistent across the whole piece. So you don't really see a big change in um, in the black tone across the piece. Um, and also, that if you look at the edges, I don't know how easy it is to see these. If you look at the edges, they're fairly clear of any large pieces of flashing where the... Um, where the mould's been a little bit inconsistent um, and also it's a, it took 24 hours roughly to achieve a really good hard stable kind of um, finish where um, one thing I had noticed with some of the resins which I'll go on to in a minute is if you just try to bend it a little bit it's really quite bendy um, and that just seemed to me like the notebooks might deform um, while you're basically storing them, or while you, when you know you think you've finished working on it, but you don't realise it's not quite hardened yet. Um, and if you store this item on its side or something, um, there's a tendency perhaps for it to warp because of that. Um, anyway, so this piece, I was really impressed with this, and I, I. I actually bought some more of this resin. So again, for anybody who's interested, um, it's Sophie and Toffee's Crystal Epoxy Resin. It's a two-part resin which you use in a ratio of one to one. Um, and like I said, it's so easy to work with. Now, on to the next piece. Um, so for this piece, I used some clear casting resin. Um, it was a fairly large container. Um, Per, per milliliter, it would work out way cheaper than Sophie and Toffee's. However, it's more difficult to work with because it's a very, very smelly product. Um, you can you can really tell that it's probably doing some harm if you're not using this in a well ventilated area. Um, it does say on the packaging use it in a well ventilated area. Um, the problem is that you know I, I'm doing this in my own home and I don't have expensive intricate extraction or exhaust systems. I'm basically limited to opening a window. So I need something that I can use in this environment and if we go back to Sophie and Toffee's product that was there was just no order at all so you know it it gives a better result and again it's easy to work with it doesn't feel as toxic you don't feel like you're harming yourself unlike with this one i felt like i was literally pickling my brain um and also if we look at the results they're almost laughable um and this is despite mixing it mixing the pigment in there for probably two or three times as long as I did with the Sophie and Toffee's product. So let's just have a look at this one and I hope that you can actually see the problem we've got here. Um, if you look at it, you can see little swirls in there. 
and that's where it's been mixed and still refuses to actually mix the pigment homogeneously across the surface so if you look again at Sophie and Toffee's it's fairly clear consistent kind of finish isn't it back to this one it's actually transparent in certain areas and I mean literally transparent you can actually see colours through these um, what amount of holes basically um, and the other thing is even though it's been about six or seven days now since I casted this one I can still smell the compounds in this resin and it is it's actually so bad that some of the rings that I made I ended up having to put in a room at the back of the house so that I couldn't smell them anymore because it was literally giving me a headache. The other thing is even though it's been six or seven days it's still really quite flexible um, and you know it's, it's quite difficult to get it to take its shape again I mean if you look at that that's just because I've just just bent those edges the, this other one doesn't do that um, and another thing is if we look at the if we go to the edges like we did with the last one hopefully you can see this the edges are really quite kind of for want of a better word all gnarly and chewed up really um, so that's going to take some of finishing really and the other thing is the difference it, the difference in feel this one feels really tacky and horrible it's not very pleasant to hold and this one feels really smooth so yeah no brainer um, I'd highly recommend Sophie and Toffee's um, epoxy resin um, this is a personal recommendation by the way um, it works for what I'm wanting it to do um, obviously I can't guarantee it will work for whatever you're working on um, so anyway yeah I just thought I'd pass that information on to you um, if you have any questions let me know in the comments um, I may do a follow up video maybe trying some other types of resin um, and I might even come up with um, something a little bit more useful perhaps based on your feedback ok well that's it for today so I'll see you again with my next video bye